Mahala, good love, good day, good evening, good morning. Wherever you are, whenever you are, it is now. And in this now, I celebrate, as in time as we know time, the birth of this channel, this means of sharing these infinite languages of lights with all of you in this video four years ago today. <laughs> with a pounding heart and a shaking voice, <laughs> a, lot, a lot like I feel right now as that day in that very, very cold <laughs> Chicago day, along with my, the love, the unconditional love of my canine companion ranger, I set forth <laughs> and gave birth to this channel and a whole new life. As I walked through this forest, and the day that the Emissaries of the Light Collective said to me, and there's Ranger <laughs> through the trees, and they said to me, it's time that you're ready and there's messages and light codes that we'd like you to share, the light codes of nature, because the trees speak, the plants, the animals speak, and the alchemy of your voice and your messages, your light languages, and the alchemy of the codes from the sun, from Gaia, from the earth, the air, the, the, the soil, all of that will bring a message to the human collective consciousness. And we are here to help you and support you. And it's time. And <laughs> I had no idea what I was doing and <laughs> had absolutely zero technical expertise whatsoever. And I made my very first video and I came in the house freezing cold and learned really quickly how to set up a YouTube channel and Languages of Lights was born. And it was as if every dimension became open to me that all of a sudden, I could hear, I was so acutely aware of my surroundings that it was as if I could hear the trees speaking to me and the flowers and the grass. And I, I became, I, I, I started an intimate relationship with myself, myself, all of me, and started hearing all of the voices of all of me and those voices wanted to be heard and because of this channel and because of my deepest highest joy and excitement and desire to share this harmony 
of the expressions of these limitless, timeless light codes that I didn't understand what these were, um, but I've come to learn and understand and be guided how to use them, how to share them more fully. And I'm learning every day um, how to do that. And it was because of this channel and walking through those cold moments that I got a message one day from you, this young lady. And I can't even remember <laughs> what you said or how it started. And Brie found my channel and a friendship was born, a relationship was born. And from the moment we connected, I saw the timeline unravel before me. And it was on a very cold <laughs> January day, exactly three years ago, that I met Brie in a very cold parking lot as she was preparing on a whole new venture of her, her life, putting together a global conference about pyramids. And we connected. And it was everything that I ever knew in my heart about connections to pyramids and when we met and all the synchronicities and I remember that night sitting in the car in the freezing cold parking lot after the meetup <laughs> um, for one of the speakers for the conference. And she said, as I was speaking languages, I see colors coming out of your mouth. <laughs> and that night, once we discovered that we were only an hour away from each other and met physically, it was as if we knew right away we had been connect connected forever. And we were just talking tonight about how it's only been three years. It feels like yesterday and forever. Yeah, literally. At the same time. And so Brie was one of the few people that actually was there basically kind of at the beginning for me because a year after beginning my light language channel, I had still not come out of the closet. <laughs> Nobody in my family knew, including my own partner of 40 years, um, because I didn't even understand it really. I didn't understand what was happening to me. And so when we met, it was as if, and when we found out that we lived near each other, it was as if the we we would spend all these hours night after night, um, Bree spending the night at my house, and to this day I remember as if it was yesterday. Those hours sitting on the couch till the wee hours in the morning, um, and even at that time you weren't even speaking light languages yet, and. Even that became, and I was like, but you will be. I yeah. knew the moment I met her, I said that night, and, and I said that that night, and when she said that about the colors, I said, oh, you will be speaking them fluently. I can hear, already hear them, and sure enough. And now, I, I, I'm not sure, I don't remember how long it was. It was like, uh, after. I think maybe five, five months after that. Five um, months, okay. Or so, because in June... Uh, I met you in, in February, so a little bit after. So. Oh, yeah, and then we went on the retreat. Mm -hmm. So it was June when I started speaking in 2016. That's right. And of course, like everybody else that, that starts to really utilize these languages, it completely changed my life. Uh, exactly. And that's, and that's what we together dreamt of. All of those nights was, how can we share this? And then I find out that all of these synchronicities began to unfold with us, just one after the other. Even tonight, we were talking about our birth chart and how similar they are and how I'm a Sagittarius sun, she's, and, and I'm a Leo moon. She's a Leo sun and a Sagittarius moon. And so, but I remember talking th that and, and discovering more about each other. And when I f well, then when I found out what you did for a living, <laughs> I mean, went to school for, um, 
and in marketing and and well, you'll have to get in more into that about exactly what you were studying um but it was as if i could see that the business side of the relationship forming and the ways we talked about how these languages were going to change the global collective consciousness the way humans think the way everything and we we're seeing the applications of these light languages in, and I'm already starting to literally vibrate like out of my chair. It's like we saw the, the, just the seeds of the possibilities of how we can put this out to the world. How do we, even though we don't know maybe what this is, we know whatever this is is huge. Now, by the time that she and I started hanging out and, and um, we were already, I was already very involved with other groups of people that I had also introduced her to that also spoke, spoke light languages, also were channelers. And one thing led to another. And as our lives were taking um, different directions, and then there I was, um, getting ready to leave everything I had ever known. I was born and raised there. And just right after I met Brie, um, I was getting ready to put my house up for sale that I had been there for 25 years. And, and we were getting ready to retire, um, to move to Tennessee. And, and it was time to start packing up the house. And really for the next year, that was my life, packing up the house and doing videos and events and trying to do it all in between. And in the meantime, there were Brie and I trying to squeeze in all of this time before I moved and doing videos together. We made groundbreaking alchemy the very first time we did a SoundCloud video together and audio <laughs> um, and videos together, even out in the, the, the woods and the farm fields. But it was as if we knew that night that you and I had that light language conversation in a SoundCloud video, audio, that recording, that something, we shifted timelines, that something changed, something new was created that never existed before because we really believed nobody had ever done this before. And, and, I, and I still don't know really if that's true or not true to this day. There's not, but, well, in general though, I mean, this is just looking at people who are, who are, going out and speaking light languages, you don't see a lot of people talking to each other in light languages. And this was a dialogue. This was a conversation. And this was exactly an actual dialogue. So for us, it was really profound. The, the alchemy of it, right? You said, you said the word alchemy. Alchemy. And from that, I mean, it's powerful enough for somebody to speak, for even it to come through their awareness, let alone to let it out in spoken or written form or sung or whatever. But for two people to come together and create a whole conversation, that's a whole different thing that I don't think, I don't think it's really, I don't think we've even explored what that really does. Oh, not really. And I, I, I haven't even listened to it. Actually, it's on my SoundCloud channel and Languages of Lights. And I haven't, I actually, honestly, I don't think I've listened to it since for a couple of years. I listened and, to it not that long ago. Um, did you? Oh, that's really funny. <laughs> Um, and I so to I just mentioned before, and I think of how oh sorry oh go ahead yeah oh well I was just gonna no say, go ahead you were talking about you know when we first met and um how we were sharing ideas and sharing kind of like who who we were because we literally just met so we didn't really although we felt it in each other we didn't really know what the personality types were or you know what we liked or what we right didn't like. and so we were sharing these things as we were driving to that pyramid energy meetup in chicago and i remember the conversation being about um uh well s specific things but in general we were saying you know we both felt like we we wanted to bring a sense of harmony and connection and absolutely yes and that that was like the like no matter what is playing out and all the drama and all the human all the stuff we ultimately were seeing the bigger picture and like okay well all this stuff is gonna play out that that's just how it's gonna have to go but what's the big yes. picture what why is all of this happening why are these people being connected you know how can 
how can this actually help the planet? And so we, um, I really think that it's, it's important to look at the bigger picture sometimes and really to zoom out from ourselves and see what's really going on um, on a collective level too and our part in creating that in that moment for our own reality. Oh, absolutely, I, I, absolutely. And, and that's how, when I very first came into the, to, to the community and I started to human colony, the community, um, channeling community, and that's where I actually began speaking them. I, I, I was immediately impassioned is the only word that comes to me right now. Impassioned completely and utterly by these languages and by the potential applications of what I was receiving in downloads and how as soon as I started speaking with them, how my awarenesses were awakening in every single facet of my life and how I was connecting to all of these realms and beings and information and just... I was, it was like this constant roller coaster ride every, and every time I went outside and every time I did a video and my life was so different then. And I was making videos literally in like below zero. I just, I laugh sometimes when I think about how, when you're so embroiled and in love with what you're doing, it's like, I didn't feel the cold until the, the camera went off. And I'm just like, Oh my God. And then poor Ranger would be so wonderful and patient with me while he waited for me to do the video. And some days we were out there for a really long time walking the forest and the farm fields and me. And I can't, and, and how can I tell people how when I walk through the farm fields and I see the wildflowers that I can hear my hybrid children? How, how do I convey what this is actually doing for me how do i share how i can talk to the soil and gertrude the oak tree like how is this possible that i could meet someone whose daughter passed away several years prior i had never met this woman before and yet as i walked in the forest one day i hear her her daughter's voice as clear as a bell with a message for her. And when I gave her the message, her mom, her mother was like, cause I had no idea what the message meant. <laughs> so I was just sharing it. So, and I thought, okay, how do we, how do we share this with the world? And, and then the rest of it started pouring in the, the, the connections and the channeled information and the circuits, the sacred circuitry, the, then the languages, the sign languages, then the telepathic connections to all these other beings. And then me starting to see other fractals of who I was and all these other realities. And then, okay, well, how, and then like, okay, well, how do these symbols come into play with all that? And then how like seeing the symbols in my dreams and waking up and seeing them and seeing them on things and how the information that's packed within them. And it was all because of these sacred symbols from Sirius that were brought to us through Bashar, which I've shared in many, many of my videos, um, channeled through Daryl Inca. And today's date equals 11. My birth path number is 11. And this 11 is the sacred circuit from Sirius for number 11 real eyes realize make real when we become aware of something it becomes real for us and that's what happened in the last three years that i relocated and my house is ever since my ever since i moved a year and a half ago i've been under this under construction, literally inside and outside physically, my house has been under renovation. So while I've been doing all of this other stuff, <laughs> like, like Bree said, stuff's going on. Life is happening. Our government's happening. Stuff is happening in the world. 
stuff is happening in our own personal lives. And the whole time she and I, even, and even if there was days or weeks or whatever, it was always coming back to the big picture. It always came back to the big picture. Which I really love. And you're a Sagittarius, so it helps. But I, so it, exactly. I really <laughs> love to, um, I mean, it's, you can't stay there always, but you know, I, it's so important. I really think it's, I, I think it's not only so important, but that a lot of people don't, don't do that very often because there, you get so encapsulated in what's physically going on in front of your eyes and you get so like caught up in your mind and your headspace. And it's like, there's more stuff. I mean, look at every event that happens. I just recently went through some crazy stuff and I know it's because I needed to meet people that I needed to meet on my journey. So why would I sit here and beat myself up over the experience? Because I needed to meet those people and that's how it had to play out and it's gonna be okay. So, you know, zooming out, it helps. <laughs> and isn't it weird? And I was, as you're saying about zooming out, the weird thing is, is that I've got eagles out here and they've been landing here every day in the tree out here, literally the bald eagles. And it's interesting how they show me, zooming out, they said to me, is actually, coming to center. They said, when you can see things from the broader perspective, you're actually seeing now that everything is happening right now, that that eagle sits out in that tree and can see the huge picture. And the eagle spirit is one of my guides. The eagle is one of my, my guides. And yet they show me that at the same time they can see, they can, the broad picture, they can see the fish. They can see the mouse. They can see the lizard from hundreds of yards away. So, and I don't, I, I, I don't know if that's accurate. That's just, you know, so, but the, you, you get my point. So it's interesting how seeing the big picture actually see, brings you back to the now and that you realize everything is happening right now, that all that I am is experiencing right now. And as we would have, Bree and I would have conversations, and if I didn't formally introduce ourselves because I get so embroiled, hi, I'm Wendy. <laughs> I'm Wendy Wolf, and this is Brie Hauk, <laughs> Brianna Lynn. Actually, there's another synchronicity. She's Brianna Lynn, Brianna Lynn. I'm Wendy Lynn. My sister's middle name is Anne. It's and so, so that we have the same middle name. There we go. So we both <laughs> have the same middle name. So I find that's interesting. And that your middle, and that part of your first name is also my my sister's name in real life. So yeah. in real life, in earth life, in this focus. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So as we went these different directions, but yet we still kept in contact. Um, and then also going through our own, you know, sharing our personal journeys and struggles and this and that, and, and the behind the scenes stuff, <laughs> um, you know, the things that we don't always share. And, you know, with the public. And um, so if, if, any, if anybody ever has the impression watching my channel or my videos that like my life is like all like, you know, rosy pops and stuff, cause like, it's not, <laughs> it's not, <laughs> you know, I've got a family and kids and drama and fam and stuff and, you know, just stuff, life and moving away from everything that I ever grew up with allowed me also though to open my to see things from a bigger picture and to allow myself to truly find out what's mine and what isn't what belonged to me and what didn't didn't um it allowed me to see me from a perspective that i'd never seen myself before all of this has, <laughs> um, obviously. And it's uh, from day one, when I, when this channel was born, 
my focus was not just on making videos and and putting myself out there. It, it was about all of this. It was about all of the people out there who have also paved the way for me. All of the other people, which back then there was only a few people speaking light languages, and especially, I mean, putting them out there on, on for the world to see. So when I built the channel, it was not only to share my own videos, and for the first year, I believe it was, until I even told my partner, my husband, about it, I was not even behind, I was not in front of the camera. I was behind the camera. It was about the languages and the alchemy of what was going around uh, uh, in how do we connect to nature? How do these languages help me connect to my chakras? How do they activate my chakras? How do they heal the deep-seated negative belief systems held within my chakra system when I'm speaking languages and looking to at a red flower? How is that healing my root chakra? That's what they were trying to show me. This is what this means. This is what we want you to tell people about one of the reasons why it's so important that they're spending time in nature because everything sings a song. Everything is a verse of the symphony of source. Every single thing speaks a language of the light because everything was born of the light. Everything. And when I began to understand the correlation between the sunlight, the light languages, the the color systems, the frequency of color, and they would guide me every day to a different plant, to a different frequency of if I if I if you take these uh, languages and apply them with the colors the colors of the flowers, you are literally activating the that connections that are, that are, you know, uh, the frequency of that color. And then even they would tell me which flowers to smell on different days, because for example, a hyacinth or a rose, or each one has a different frequency that would connect me to something different. It would connect me to a different reality. It would connect me to, um, beings, <laughs> literal beings. Um, and, I would just be journaling and journaling and journaling and I couldn't get enough. I couldn't get enough. And I, I still do that to this day. I just can't get enough information and I can't, it's like, I can't share it fast enough. It's like, a, and then as Brie and I were looking at these symbols and, and books, books filled with these symbols, it's like, I started to realize these have so many purposes. They're activating vortexes across the planet there i can i can sit in a meditation and speak light languages and place myself my energy my awareness anywhere and activate that portal anywhere i want i can and this is what they're showing me and teaching me and to to and to as a way shower and teacher of the teachers that this is just isn't about me putting out light languages and and it's it's about what do they mean how can they be applied and developed and what do they mean to the earth and how is it related to creating this new 5d earth how is it related to connecting to our guides how is it related to our weather how can we affect our weather how can we connect with gaia how can we literally change physical matter with light languages meaning how do we change our physical reality my physical body how do i apply what i know what i've learned what i've received and alchemize that into a message to help us all live better lives to how do i deal with physical pain how do i deal with mental anguish how do i deal with thoughts and beliefs that i don't understand but that are preventing me from moving forward and 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 setting the fear aside how do i share this stuff where how and so it became this constant wanting and desire to share this and and wanting to know more and then my having been in the very familiar and worked with computers all of my life, 
yet there was this these aspects of the internet the world wide web social media things that i didn't really understand and i'm not comfortable with to, in many ways still and so i put it out to the universe energetically consciously unconsciously as we all do as we desire something we put out a, a beam and i find brie somebody who knows this stuff about things that i don't that and to help me and then in turn we it was as if we both were obviously teaching each other constantly the student and the teacher and three years ago <laughs> on on those cold and hot winter days hot winter days those cold days and then the hot summer days where she would come over and we'd be walking and barefoot and being in the mud and in the forest and in the far fields i wanted to share my experience dragging her out there <laughs> remember the time we were out there and you were i thought i lost my phone in the farm field and we were out there for a couple hours only and seriously it was in the woods <laughs> and it ended up actually we um in the woods on the other side and actually it was my husband who ended up finding him he, he walked out there in five minutes found it and yeah. i've been looking for it for a week a week you guys a week i did a video about it actually <laughs> i remember that i remember that <laughs> way back in the you know how do we put this together and what do we do and and a website <laughs> the seeds for the web for a website a presence on the internet other than youtube we're planted and today being an 11 <laughs> A <laughs> number um so many beautiful synchronicities and 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 in the idea of alchemy i thought it was interesting too that we were talking um today we've known each other like exactly three years i think almost pretty close to the month here anyway um we met in january it, that's what i thought i was say i believe we met in january in february yeah. and then i started my youtube channel in January, the year before. That's and amazing. And I thought that you were a light language professional. Like at that, you know, three years ago when I met you, right. I, you were professionally like doing all these, you know, services and channeling and, you know, psychic um, readings and all of that um, back then. And then, you know. And I then she came over to my house. <laughs> Get to know you and you're like i don't know what's going and on she met the real me you're like i'm just i just feel like i'm supposed to put this out there and i don't really know what and she's like and i is. can help you with that she's like yeah. and i can help you with that yeah yeah and it's it's so interesting because we me and wendy as she was saying you know of course we we have very similar uh collective goals in mind i guess to, like, yes we, that's a good I, way to put it as soon as i heard light language for the first time it was called galactic language you know um and like you know an extraterrestrial was speaking it but i was like where do i get a textbook and where can i start studying and i want to learn every single word and i want to learn the grammar and, and they're like it doesn't work that it way. doesn't work that way <laughs> uh what you can just activate your uh what you know so it was just it it flipped things around for me because um everything's kind of upside down here on planet earth most of what we've been taught and told mm, a whole lot of it is upside down but to our truth to our soul truth right so um i very quickly figured that out um time and time and time and time and time again so um, Isn't it amazing how emotional too the languages can make you can oh, evoke in us that we just yeah. don't even understand? I, it happened to me again today with a woman I just met. She met me. She's found my my videos, and there was the instant connection. I was in tears. I was just I, I can't explain it. Yeah, 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 yeah. The first day that I started speaking with two other 
beautiful ladies when we were at that retreat. At um, the retreat. We started speaking, things were coming out of our mouth that we didn't understand. And then I would start to cry and then she would start to laugh. And then I would start, and it was like this, uh, we didn't know. Well, and I'm glad you brought that up too about the, the retreat, because shortly after we met, we went on a retreat together that was um, put on by a, a mutual friend of ours, um, Will Mitchell from Ricky with Will. And um <laughs> Another and another incredible part of my journey that just meeting him and that whole trip just was completely completely life altering and yeah. Yeah. the drive there because <laughs> Bree bless her heart <laughs> agreed to drive both both ways from Chicago and that was before I had relocated and um, I forget what was it like a ten hour drive or something and we oh had yeah. the best time I mean it was like we were there yeah it was like no time at all and. Yeah the drive there and the whole five days there and then the drive back just that time that we got to spend on the drive there and the drive back was just it, it was just so completely magical and all of the synchronicities and just how we just couldn't get enough of the, uh, oh my <laughs> and so here we all and for the breezes one my physical address here where i live is 111 where i lived before my physical address added up to 111 i started this youtube channel 4 years ago 1111 in january and I got to think about this for just a second. Let me just add this up for a second. Um, six. Um, and also this year, I was adding something else up. Um, this year, I'm happy to announce, I'm thrilled and excited and exasperate. I don't even know the word for, um, to give birth. <laughs> On January 1st at 11.47 p.m., languagesoflights.com was born. <laughs> Yay! Our dream child dream was born child. after Wait, three here's years the, of incubation. Here's the, here's the, uh, the birthday song. <laughs> Oh yeah, so I should be like chimes, chimes, the drum, by the chimes. Way. I love it. I love that. I love that drum. <laughs> so on January first, eleven forty-seven p.m., we launched together, <laughs> languagesoflights.com, and <clears throat> many, every single word. <laughs> um. And it's it, it was carefully chosen, and there's still more that's going to be changing and morphing. And every day I read it, and I go, "Oh, there's something else I want to add. There's something else I want to change." And um, we together, I sat with my guides, and with the help of all of you, by your feedback, by your messages, by the private sessions that you've requested over the past three, four years. I felt like I needed a home base, a, a place to gather and to bring everything into one space other than just YouTube and to, 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 to bring these light codes, the symbols, the, um, the light languages, the sound cloud, the, all of it, and bring it all into one home place. And from that, from that home place to build this family. And that has been my goal along, even with my YouTube channel. As I mentioned earlier, I started creating playlists of everybody else <laughs> of who does this stuff that helped me along my journey. So when I began Languages of Lights, it wasn't just about me sharing my videos. It was also about collectively, these are all the people that have helped me along my journey. Perhaps by checking their playlist, my playlists of their stuff, 
they can help you on your journey just as I hope I'm helping you with yours. Because that to me was the biggest gift when I would watch these people who have put themselves out on YouTube, whether it's channeling or light languages, it, it, I would weep in the recognition and the knowing that this was something I was going to do. And I didn't know how, I didn't know how, but it was, and it was as if I knew right away, this was why I found them. When you said weep in recognition, I literally don't know how many how t- how many times I've done that too. <laughs> I, I, yes, feeling feeling into the future, future. Yes, and that and stuff, and feeling into what we're what we're building, the seeds we're planting, and how they're growing and blossoming like we can't even understand the the ripple effects yeah, that all of this exactly. Even, even just speaking of I don't even know what how much of an impact we're just starting to understand this stuff here on earth you know like what is actually happening with this intentional right because what what were the first words and and then and then there was light or whatever okay well that's speaking the light Speaking, speaking the light, the light. and then there was light and i'm glad that you said that brie because in many times in my meditations and even in my video that last night i'm the the connections are so emotional and the closer you get to that original light that first light it's almost as if the love is so completely and utterly pure and powerful that it's it's almost as if you can't almost get that close yeah. I don't know how to describe that. Yeah, because it is. It, it's so pure. You, I guess like what just popped into my mind is like, if ever, you know, separation is an illusion, polarity is an illusion. All these things are illusions so we can have this experience. Like if all the sounds were simultaneously happening in your ear all at once, uh, or that vibration, not in your ear, sorry. If all, if you were feeling the vibration of yes. all the sounds, in creation all at once oh. the vibration is because everything is love right or made of of yep. love uh, of source light of love so yeah i don't think we can handle all the vibrations no. simultaneously. and i i've had that's that in my own say, you would explode in your it, it is it, and i now i understand what that means like i always yeah. thought oh yeah yeah you know but no i yeah. get it now i mean <laughs> I, I thought, oh, you know, I can handle that. You know, I can handle that, you know, and it's like, Bring it but up. I'm telling you, I've had meditations <laughs> where even the being that we know as Jesus and however he presented himself to me, it was, as I literally, when it came into my heart space and I felt him in the little, like in the room, I said to him, you need to back away because I'm going to cry because I can't handle the, I cannot handle the beauty of your energy. I just, it was as if I'm like, you just need to just stand right there. <laughs> you know, just stand right over there. <laughs> Isn't interesting? I, I can't explain it. And we're, but, the, the more that we, you know, shift up into the, the, the more we physically shift up into the higher dimensions, as we're always doing, raising our vibration does shift us into higher dimensions. Um, the more that we can experience that stuff and the more that we'll understand, you know, but it's a process. Exactly. It's, here. it's the, the whole, the whole planet is going through this all, everything, well, and, not just humans. And as we, so as we began to, so as Brie and I began conceiving this, we, okay. It's like, it was like, okay, what do we want to tell the world? How do we want to, um, how do she would say to me, how do you want to, you know, present this to the world and what, what have you learned? And, and so we, and so little by little as the, through the information that I've collected through these last, well, and whatever, I think I'm up to 11, 130 some videos now over a course of four years. So if you guys do the math (laughs) and divide that by four, (laughs) 
<laughs> that's a lot of videos every year. <laughs> um, it was, and simply a labor of love, a complete passion. And as I would receive information and as I would start then taking galactic Reiki classes, I studied the Aquarian fire, became an Aquarian fire master teacher, which was something that we were ignited, Brie and I together in Hot Springs, Arkansas. Um, but one thing I wanted to mention about that and, and all of this and the people along the way is there were, there's certain ones of us though, that, that like took this to the next level. Whereas there's a lot of people we know, for example, that speak light languages, but they, but there wasn't that passion to how do I, what do I do with them? How do I share them? How can they help me? How do they help other people? How can we apply them? And I started, the more questions I asked, the more we received. Ask and it is given. The more questions I would ask of my guides, the more information I would be downloaded. Every single day I would be downloaded with information about how to use them, how to help people, how do I break the chains of my own negative belief systems. And by doing that, how do I empower myself and how do I empower other people to empower themselves? It's not just about speaking a language to somebody and saying, I'm going to make your pain go away. That's, that's to me, not the goal that now I'm not saying they're not used for physical healing. That's not what I'm saying at all. Absolutely. They're used for physical healing. It's about understanding though, how to use it for physical healing. It's about how to apply them because it's about raising the vibration of this you to a vibration of a different you that no longer contains that vibration of that thing. Shifting That's what healing reality. does. Yeah, shifting to That's what, by the, yes. It's actually you are literally point. carrying, and if your intention isn't involved, there's nothing that someone else can do for you. <laughs> it yeah. doesn't work that way it's right. with you it's a co-creation yes yeah, and it's with your complete either. permission yeah right a permission and your complete permission intention, right like they you really need all those things if you go to a healer you say yeah that's garbage you don't have the ability to do that and i'm not willing to heal but go ahead and try nothing's gonna happen and you can go to a, and I'm not saying that you can't go to a, 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 a Reiki practitioner. I, pra, I, I can practice Reiki too and galactic Reiki. And, and um, that's not the point. Again, it's about frequency and it's about understanding the frequencies and about understanding, feeling that within a person. Um, I, start, I started understanding after I started speaking languages and, and doing more channeling that I was been channeling all my life. And what I started to understand was I've all been talking to the angels all my life. I've been talking all my life. But what I started to understand was what I didn't understand as a, as a child and as a very young child was as soon as I would meet a person, I was able to read their energy. And it was almost as if I could, like I knew their story and all I had to do was like, look like meet them and it was as if i could read their whole like their deep seated stuff like that's what i mean like the stuff that they don't even talk about it was like i could like feel it within them and it wasn't until i started understanding reiki and practicing other that i began to understand energy and feeling it and how to use it how to send it and then I started using it with my own family, with illnesses, diseases. But I also began to understand to be an effective teacher. You have, you have, it's an alchemy. It's, it's empowering the person to, and Jesus will be the first one to say, I did not heal you. You, your belief that I healed you, healed you. I only did what you gave me permission to because if you didn't give me permission you would not be healed your belief was the permission yeah. without that i am nothing i'm simply a conduit and but yet it has a physical material effect 
And so, yes, Reiki works because we're focusing the energy and we're raising the person's vibration and we're identifying wherever that is, whether it's in the chakra system or the, in the, the deep seated belief systems that are held as energy within a person's body because everything's energy. Every single thing, the pen, the paper, the, uh, the food, you, every single thing is energy. Um, when you begin to understand, like Tesla, everything's energy, everything's frequency, everything's resonance, you begin to understand how you can read and manipulate energy. And with that said, it's about the intention. And I will say, and this is important because this is something we, I think Bree and I talked about the other day, or maybe I was talking to someone else. Forgive me if it was someone else. Um, <clears throat> I don't believe that light language can be used for anything but benevolent uses because I believe that if it if if you're speaking it and the intention is is not of pure light and and intention it's no longer called you can't call it light language then it's it's not and this this goes for further clarification because that doesn't mean it wasn't created in the light since everything is but so is polarity. So if somebody were to ask me, how do you know what you're saying? And how do you know if the intention is good or pure? Or how do you know if what you're saying is not going to create something other than that? Because I can't. Because I'm not capable. I can't. I, I, don't, I, I, can't, I don't know how to do that. And I, don't, I couldn't. I couldn't, I don't think I could speak a language with that intention. Do you understand what I'm saying? I, do. I don't. For, for myself, I know that um, the, only, like, the only languages and feelings and emotions and, um, and, and the experience for me when I'm speaking it is only incredible. It's only... A, an incredible experience. I will say there are some people who, uh, because one of the things that light language does is it, it, it helps to unblock energy blockage. It depends on the intention. It depends on what comes through. There are sometimes people will hear a light language and they will have a physical symptom because something's being unblocked energetically. And True. Say something evil they don't understand oh that's a good you know that's a, actually a very very good point mm -hmm. because it could be the very thing that your guides have led you to that person to unblock that you think is a, is a negative mm -hmm. and you know let's touch on that for just a second because not every light language you're going to resonate with i don't even resonate with other some other light languages Absolutely. i don't know why right i just don't and the same thing is going to happen where we are not always going to resonate with the same person, the same channel or the same doctor, the same grocery store. You can even have the same grocery store with the same name. And you like that one on that street better than that one because they have different people and they have a different layout or they just, they're just different. You know, they're, they have a different energy. They have a different energy and each one of us, can be guided to different guides at different times. And you could even turn on my channel and go, oh my God, what was that? And I, and then a, a year from now, you could come back and go, wow, that's the most beautiful thing I ever heard or vice versa. I mean, you know, <laughs> it just, because sometimes I listen to some of my videos and they kind of freak me out. Like I listen, I'm like, if somebody were to hear that for the first time, I would scare the living crap out of them because I listen. Sometimes I think of like, is that coming out of me? And does that, you know, how can that sound like that, but still be, but I already, because I know, I just know. Um, and another thing light language is I wanted to mention a lot. Another thing light languages has allowed me to, to do, to experience is it's allowed me to experience myself 
literally as other like beings like for example yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yes because you for example <laughs> i've actually seen myself as a physical like a wolf i've seen myself as a is a wolf canine uh hybrid i've seen myself as many hybrid beings i've seen my i've i've experienced myself with the dolphin i've experienced myself as a um unicorn i've experienced myself as these animals archetypes and as these other beings i can't explain it but it's happened <laughs> <laughs> and, and that and that to me is opening us up to our multidimensionality of infinity because we are the entire omniverse i'm not talking just the solar system we're literally all the universes all the parallel where everything is within our physical human body and in the ascension we are clearing all of those timelines and going up and up and up and so um you know it, it connects us with our multidimensionality, but it also connects, like for myself, it has taken my telepathy and like skyrocketed it. And exactly. And my, and my, a bit, I mean, I know it, what was the phrase in enhancing your uh, abilities, your clear audience, clear sentience, clear cognizance, clairvoyance, clear, because that's what they do, especially if you they intend do. them to do that. But I, that wasn't even my intention with them. Exactly. It's happened without even being my, I, I didn't even know it was gonna. It was like that was a symptom. I was like, yeah. like, oh, gee, I get to be more psychic now. Yay! A side effect of, of <laughs> a side effect. Yeah. Of, and and also with um talking about the the portals of the earth, it's now by portals these are these are high, extremely high dimensional. Yep. Like stargates, you can think energy, of them yes, as they're as energy or energy vortexes, gateways. and even Bashar has has substantiated this in many of his events. That it, and um, every time I listen to one of his events, I'm 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 receiving in it's I'm hearing what I already know, <laughs> like instinctively what I already know inside of me, and very interesting about the vortexes because we literally can. Um, grab the energy from these places just by thinking about them and just by focusing on that energy and literally being able to connect to all of these ships. I did. Matter of fact, I was listening to one of his events a couple of days ago and he was talking about where each and every one of the Shikani ships was all over the planet. He listed every single city and and in my meditation a day or two ago i got i i don't know how it happened but they said or something i heard in my head said <clears throat> you know if you want to right now you could connect to all the ships all at one time and send us all a message all at once i was like yeah okay and I did. <laughs> Boom, like a broadcast. That was talk about empowerment, right? And that was what that was actually how you had first started um really reaching out multidimensionally with your connections, wasn't it? Yes. You heard about the permission slips through Bashar. You put that spiral in your plan. And my and I still have it right here back right. in my yep, it's just it's just a metal spiral. And it actually was just it used to hold a test tube that was actually for measuring rain. It was a rain water and it's just it had a glass test tube in it. And of course I left it outside and it got too cold and it froze and broke and shattered. And all that was left was the spiral. And I heard one day in my meditation through Bashar saying, You can use something as a permission slip to connect to us. And I said, Well, let me use this spiral and I want to connect to the whole planet, <laughs> the whole Shikani race. <laughs> and so I did. And back then it wasn't even Shikani yet. They hadn't even, they weren't even calling themselves that. It was still Sasani. And the other thing was, back then, there were only four laws of existence. Oh, yes. Very few people may remember this. And I count myself as one of the 
ones who changed an entire reality because one of his events and now i don't remember a lot of what these events were because these were ones that people were putting on youtube that were getting taken off as quickly as they were going on so and this was many years ago and let's try um I was trying to remember exactly what I wanted to say about that. You said you shifted timelines. He's oh, the four laws. The, the 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 four the four laws of existence. So he did an event and he said, "All of you that are present right now, we would like you to. We have and I can't and I'm paraphrasing here something about." We have received an indication based upon your current energy or like your, your current like energy level as a collective consciousness that we should insert as number, as law of existence number two, everything is here and now. That was a, not originally one of the five laws of existence. So they inserted it as number two. Well, first, first what happened was they said, we want you all to vote on it telepathically. Then he did another event and he said, I believe if I'm, and I, I want to make sure I'm doing this, saying this accurately, but because I'm sure somebody can go research this, but, and I think it was in another event or maybe it was in the same event. He said, it has been decided you have voted and it is now so that the second law of the universe of, of existence will be listed as everything is here and now therefore shifting the other laws of existence down and now creating five laws of existence instead of four the last one always being every Everything changes except for the first four laws and it first read everything changes except for the first three laws i just i have i wrote in my bashar journal today the the leather journal that's what i went to go get a few minutes ago but they said you don't really need it but in my leather journal was the day that i started all of the when i started writing all these notes and they told me one day you will be teaching this that's why you're so passionate about writing it all down because i couldn't get enough of it and they said it will start to like activate you in the tools that you're going to need as a teacher to not to, to teach this. And it was then later that I began to discover that not only was I so uh, passionate about teaching this, these whatever ideas and principles um, for, to, to, for a, har a more harmonious life on earth and how can we help everybody else do that. But it was later when I began to understand that my connections to the angels that I've had all my life and the, all of that started to really, I started to understand things in a little bit more clearly and started to see things from a little bit different perspective. And then when I began to understand and hearing very humbly so. Well, of course you would want to share this, this teaching because it resonates with you because you were the ones who taught it to them. That was a very, very, very profound realization and not something that I was easily able to embrace. <laughs> For obvious reasons, um, I think, <laughs> you know, because there's that whole, you know, of all the people on the planet, why me? And why am I so excited about this one? Not everybody else is. It, well, it's because we all have a different frequency and we all have something different to teach. And we all have something, and Bree and I can both speak light languages and yet there are going, we, there, we each have different students. And yet we're still each other's teachers and each other's students. It's just how it is. <laughs> That's how it is. And once we begin to truly see ourselves as equal creations and perspectives to all other creations and perspectives, 
until we can resonate in that frequency, we cannot interact with these higher dimensional beings. It's not possible. It's not physically possible. They can't come down far enough and we can't get high enough. It's, we have got to come together. And I truly believe, and I've understood this more and more, as I've been writing these symbols and doing the hand signs and speaking them and singing them, all of this stuff, I realize is us in preparation for this, whatever this is, the hybrid children, first contact, meeting our, meeting our ET families and guides, those of us who have chosen to be galactic ambassadors, who have chosen, who know, I already know I'm out there on all the ships and all these planets and, and learning about other species as a first contact specialist and, and as a galactic ambassador to bring people together in this interstellar alliance that to, to finally understand, to, to, for people to understand every single thing is connected. There is nothing, nothing, nothing that we have, that we are separated from and that we came, we are so powerful that we came to experience something that no other species has the balls enough to do than we do. Nowhere in creation, no where, no when, no now, other than this one is like this. We're the bomb. We're the, uh, we're literally, as Abraham Hicks says, on the leading edge. We are the leading edge. We're changing the edge. <laughs> we're moving it. And it's to create this higher dimensional earth. And for me, the idea of Esasani, the place of living light, the planet of the Shikani race, I believe is, is my permission slip, my representation of what that earth is supposed to be, the model, if you will, a similar idea that it remains pristine, that it remains pure, and that it remains as a, that we should revere it and love it and allow it to be. They allow their planet to be a teaching tool. They don't build on it. They're, they live in their enormous ships. And I don't know what this new earth is going to be, but I know that we together are creating another race of human. And me and Bree and all of you are part of this, creating this new race and bridging this gap. Because think about it, you guys. If, if, if the energy is right, as Bashar and, and the Pleiadians and the Lyrians and the Arcturians and all of them are reading right now, as I, any given moment, the emissaries of the Light Collective can be talking to me and it could be one or a million of them, you know, and they're all saying the same things. <laughs> they're all saying the same things. You guys are preparing to meet your families in a way you never have before, the way it's never been done before. And if the timeline is correct, this can be within seven to 10 years. That's, this is what I believe why so many of us too are getting the Push now, and the more the people I'm meeting, like you guys who are coming to me saying, What is this? What am I doing? What are these languages? What are they for? What are these symbols? What am I creating them? How do I use them? Why are they? Who are these people? Am I speaking to them? Are they speaking to me? Is this me talking to me? Is this other planets talking to me? Is it my higher self talking to me? Yes, 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 yes. All of the above. It's our need to categorize it. That's the problem. Yeah. It's our need to know. Well, who is that? Well, who is that? Well, what's your name? Well, who, you know what? It could be a mist that's decided that its highest excitement is to come and interact with you. It doesn't have a name. It doesn't know its name. It just is. And it's, hi, how you doing? <laughs> 
I just happened to be in your frequency and just wanted to say hi. Name? What's that? <laughs> it's so interesting too because I think um I think if it's really important in that moment for somebody to know they're going to be given the name somehow yep. even if it's so not even if you know maybe it's through a, a a passing i've had that happen where it was like i was i passed by a street sign and the street sign was yep. like, at me and the name of the street sign and there was something there where well i'll of the synchronicities with me and the white feather and white magic and yeah. all the feathers that I've been collecting and the white feathers and then the, this beautiful person who sends this um, hand makes this uh, ornament for me with two white feathers in it and then right in my own neighborhood I completely forgot I have a street called Twin Feathers and then I completely forgot a couple of years ago my sister was at my house up north and where I live by Brie used to live by Brie and she said to me, my sister said to me, there's a fairy here. How does she say that? There's a fairy here that wants to talk to you or something, and her name is Feather. I just remembered that the other day. <laughs> and we still talk about Feather. Every now and then I'll ask my sister, you know. You ever hear, you know, because my sister and I are, she's always giving me fairies. She gave me a fairy door. She gave me a fairy for my, for my birthday. Um, I've always been connected to the fairies and the trees and the, the you know, the sprites and the sp and all of that. I've always thought I was magic. I always thought I could shape shift. I always thought I could disappear. I figured everybody could. I just figured everybody could, but they just didn't remember they could. But I knew I could. And of course, it got unlearned. And then, but yeah, there's those of us, I believe, I, I believe I know for sure I've been awake all my life. I, even my mother said to me the other day when she found out I had a YouTube channel, after four years, <laughs> um, she said, I knew by the time you were three that you were very, very special, that you were very different. And she said, and I fought very hard to keep you as, as a child and, and, and you know, um, and it, 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 to be born. And it was very emotional. It was a very emotional thing. And um, for both of us and, but it, it I don't know how to explain it, but it, is, it was as if my consciousness for just even a brief moment, and it was so powerfully emotional that I can understand why you wouldn't want to cling there too long because it, it's really powerful. But for that brief moment, I could see myself in her womb and I could see that they were with me and I burst into like my guides. I could see that they said to me, we were there then. We were there before then. Then. like we were there before then because we knew you were going to be conceived like it was so weird and it was but it was like a flash but it would but yet it a lot it was I can't explain it and it was as if I knew that feeling of complete and utter like you have been supported from day one and no matter what, what shit you went through all of your life We've never, ever left you. That's how you got through it because you knew we were there with you. And I didn't, I didn't believe in God the way people did. I didn't pray the way people did. I didn't have religion the way people did. I did not have that. Matter of fact, my mom kept trying to give it to me because I didn't believe that. I didn't have that because I saw things from a, a, a higher perspective and I kept telling my mom and my religion was created by man for them to understand that that they can't understand and and, and that they're they're depicting other beings from other worlds 
and they're trying to put it into a box and a label and an explanation. And then they misconstrued it and then it turned into, you know, human greed and all of these other, you know, and, yeah. but yet I never lost the eagle perspective. There was always something that said to me when I heard that song in 1968 by the, you know, the fifth dimension, the age of Aquarius, that song. And I was weeping and I was what, seven? I'm thinking, this is the way I know the world is supposed to be. Harmony and understanding. Um, you know, just all of the words. If you don't know the song, you don't know the words, look it up. Fifth Dimension, Age of Aquarius. I think everybody knows that song. Um, if you don't, but the lyrics could have been written today. It, it just, and now here we are. We've shifted in from the age of Pisces into the age of Aquarius. We're here now. The age is last. I think, it, I think the technical is like 26 thousand years or something i think is how long an actual age lasts so we've moved into the age of aquarius we're here this is it folks we're here so i knew then and then what i found out later was how my guides and the shikani guides and how they had been with me all along and boy was that emotional because then i started seeing they literally started showing me the timelines the slides of which i had collected that made my life and how each time they were with me. And it was like remembering, but then reminding myself, wait, everything's now. It's like, <laughs> talk about mind blowing. <laughs> oh, wait, there is no past. Everything's now. But they were with me back then. But they were, I'm just like. <sighs> yeah, it's interesting. <laughs> so <laughs> with that said, I think I'm going to ask Brie to pause here really quick. Okay, so this is exciting. We're back. Um, oh, well, first of all, Wendy, you what what would you like to say about your after coming back, your new uh, surroundings? Oh no, you're you're cutting out. Wait, say that again. Wait, I was gonna say wait, say that again. Your your new surroundings. Yes. Yes. What so, about them? Oh, yes. Oh, my God. So, <laughs> on break. <laughs> we covered a lot of stuff on break. <laughs> we did. As we usually do. So, if anybody, if any of you have been watching my channel, you know, I've been having this contest going on for a free session. And originally what I had set up was, it was my synchronicity free session con contest where if anybody typed in, in my comment section on my videos, hashtag synchronicity or just synchronicity. <laughs> um, I you were entered into a drawing for a free session and I put it in a little cup and then I randomly on, on videos, um, live uh, on, on videos recorded, I draw people's names for a free session. So I did a couple of things in between on the break. So I thought it would be fun. <laughs> I said to Bree, do you think this is funny or silly? So I said, okay, if you guys can tell me two things that are different in the video since we went on break since and, and to now, then send, send it to me on my website and we will show you where. <laughs> send me on the website what two things are different and it's not my glasses that doesn't count because <laughs> I take them on and off all the time. It's not my glasses. so. There's two different things that are different, either about me or the room, um, since we went on break. And if you can tell me what they are, both things in the contact section on my webpage, then you will win a free session. <laughs> so that just goes to, goes to show me too how much of how much you guys love all of us, and if you've stuck with us all this time. <laughs> Thumbs up to you. <laughs> so there's your reward for sticking it out. <laughs> <laughs> so, and if we get too many, well, then I'll just, I might have to put a cap on it, but you know, if too, if too many, if too many, I'll figure it out. <laughs> but at any rate, um, yes. And I, uh, I love doing that. I love being able to, um, offer just free sessions here and there just to make this, to make me even more available, um, and accessible 
for those of you who may be just wondering or curious or have questions about what all of this is or what healing, you know, anything about light languages, oracle readings, that's a whole other thing that we haven't even touched on today, is about how spirit does speak through us through oracle cards and how much I've come to love um, that, the messages that come through that permission slip oracle cards and the, the intuitive guidance I get while I'm doing the cards and all the synchronicities with the numbers blows my mind all the time. The synchronicities with the numbers I get on these oracle cards sometimes makes me, it just, it, it blows my, my mind. So but the point is, yeah, if somebody's looking for physical healing or belief systems or, you know, and so we'll, we'll go into that just a little bit here um, really briefly before we sign off. But um, so one of the, so, so this, I wanted to celebrate us and me and you and Bree and this, this being together tonight and, and all of you that whether you've been with me for a day, a week, a month, or all four years, so many of you have been with me since the beginning. And how much, so many of you too have said how, how much you've even seen how I've morphed and grown and expanded and and isn't it exciting when I look at my very first video and, and all of in between and everything I've experienced and all the things I've been able to share with you guys and then taking that and putting it into a way that, that into a, I don't even know the word I'm trying to come up with, a, 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 a way for us to connect where we can explore all of this together and based upon what everybody's been sending me over the years of messages and as i said earlier and about things that all of you that have shown me the things that you guys like and this is how the website has been built and born was about a little bit about my journey, a little bit about what are light languages and my experiences with them. And then how can I, in services, re relate and convey and share this information and yet illuminate it and light within you to be able to take and apply them in whatever way excites you, whether that's for your own use, for taking it out into the world, for becoming your own light language linguist and teacher, um, and, and exploring them, um, d d and the, the guidance that comes through. When I start speaking these languages in sessions and the information that comes through, and up to this point, especially with the full sessions, it's like, I start meditating even the night before and start receiving information and writing information, getting symbols and activations and names and and so it's and then all of the inf the channelings that come through during the sessions and then what is needed is the Aquarian fire needed is the galactic Reiki necessary. Theory. Is it oracle messages? Is it light languages? Is it, um, there's so many facets to all of this and all of the things that I love and ex that excite me. And so I was trying to have a complete session where we could explore any and all of these things over a say like a 90 minute period where we could really explore it. Because even just getting together, um, one of the things I wanted to accomplish, which Brie has so delightfully done, is allowed, there's a few questions that, we, we, that we've designed to, to ask because these are always questions that end up taking so much of our time together during a session. So I thought if we could get a couple of questions out of the way ahead of time, so I know what is our focus. What is your focus for our time together? Do you already speak light languages? Do you want to focus on that? What is it that you're looking for? And how can we m more spend more time on that than, well, what are you looking for? How do you do this? Or do you already speak languages? What are you interested in? 
often? What do you? So we've built the site with all of these things in mind, based upon what you guys have asked me about and asked for some people just want some people want to do it all some people want that full-blown everything let's try you know whatever comes up um energetically and then i also draw the symbols write the symbols and then take a photo of it and and um, digitally send it to you along with the recorded session um, on my youtube video or, or, or a private video for you with your link with a link just for you and along with that all of this channeled information whatever i receive and um it's a it's for me it's a, an experience and i typically will only do one of those full sessions a day because it's just it's it's about the interaction it's about that focus of energy and then splitting it out into some people just want to the oracle guidance and the intuitive guidance that comes through just oracle readings and there's the shorter versions and the longer versions of that and then there are the actual light language activations that people want to be activated they want to there's pre-recorded options of activations where it's a pre-recorded personalized activation just for you um, where, yeah. So if you want to, yeah, I was going to say, Brie was going to show us, do some screen shares with us when we're talking about all this. Oh, oh there's my, well, I love, funny. there's my symbol. That, that I love my symbol. Up. Uh, you know what? I guess I, I was meaning to say, Hey, I guess the, the 